Let's start this service with a wonderful song. <laughs> Shining Mountain. to start this morning, and I want to welcome everyone to the Kalispell Center for Spiritual Living. You know, we gather here today to celebrate the fact that each one of you is a light, a light of the world, and the world needs your light. You know, if you think about it, we all start from the main assemblage point of the whole universe, and we're all part of the same stuff. We're all connected to everything. And we're all that light. So here at the Kalispell Center for Spiritual Living, we're here to celebrate that light. And we're here to celebrate you. And whether you're here in our congregation or online, we want you to be part of our celebration. Now, if you're here for the first time, please pick up a welcome packet. Pick up a little email thing and get on our email list. There's even a prayer request form. But join me in stating our statement of purpose because we're here to, and dedicated to help you find, to help you realize that you are the light. <laughs> our community lovingly and joyfully inspires, supports, and empowers individuals to discover and express their divinity. Well, good news. We have a wonderful new we have a wonderful new website, and they have these on the back table, so pick one up. And thanks to 
the comps family who did a wonderful job putting this together, but please take a look at it. Let us know what you think. Immediately after this service, we're going to have a little prayer circle. So if something's on your heart or in your mind, join us. Or alternatively, you can fill out a prayer request form. But we really would like for you to join us in prayer. Every Wednesday from 7.30 to 8 p.m., um, we have a Zoom meditation. There's a card on the back table, and it'll tell you how to log into the Zoom. And tomorrow at 5.30, we'll be feeding the flathead at Bethlehem Lutheran Church. So there's a sign-up sheet on the back table if you're interested in helping. And next Sunday, all of you guys better bring a friend. I'm serious. You all need to bring a friend because we're going to have a very special guest, the Reverend Christian Sorensen, and he's going to be sharing his wonderful wisdom with us. You know, this guy is kind of a, a rock star in the Centers for Spiritual Living. He authored 10 books. He's an inspiring and gifted people, and we're very lucky to have him come speak to us. So bring your friends. I'm going to be looking. <laughs> So anyway, now is the time to take a moment to say hello to an old friend or to make meet a new one. <laughs> remain standing if you'd like and join us in our first congregational song or actually our second <laughs> but please sing with us Thank you. 
great way to start our day with love and joy and peace. And thank you to all the musicians for making this a bright and lively service this morning. So we've come to that time in our service where we get to bless our children. The children are our future, and we love them, and we embrace them, and we bless them. So if you would please join me in this blessing of the children. We see you who you really are made in the image and likeness of God. We cherish you, we support you, and we love you. And so breathing into that space of love, let us know the truth of our being, children of the divine. Knowing there is only one power, one presence, one being. And it is known by many names, Atman, the Great Spirit, the One, the Holy One. Today I call it God, God the Good Omnipotent. God is light and love and peace and joy. God truly is all there is in each one of us. Each of us is an individualized expression of that One, whole, perfect, and complete exactly the way we are right here and right now. Knowing that God manifests itself in, through, and most importantly, as us. We are love and peace and joy. And so as we move through today and through the ensuing week, our hearts are filled up and spilling over with love and compassion knowing that each one we meet is also a child of the divine, whole and perfect. Knowing that the strength of the divine supports us, the love of the divine enfolds us, the power of the divine protects us. We are one with it and we're grateful. We're grateful for the wisdom and the strength of God as it vibrates in every cell and fiber of our being. We are grateful for the opportunity to express that God self each and every moment through love and joy and peace. We are grateful to be here at this time in this place allowing our good to shine forth. So I release this word now to the perfect working of the perfect law, which always, always and only says yes. Please join me in affirming. And so it is. Amen. And now we'll have some extra special music by our musicians. Just a dead thing you can claim But I know every rock and tree and creature Has a life, has a spirit, has a name You think the only people who are people Are the people who look and think like you but if you want the footsteps of a stranger, you'll learn things you never knew, you never knew. Have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn blue? Or ask the 
grinning bobcat while he grins. We need to sing with all the voices of the mountain. We need to paint with all the colors of the moon. We need to paint with all the colors of the moon. Run the hidden pine trails of the forest. Come taste the sun sweet berries of the earth. Come roll in all the riches all around you. And for once, never wonder what they're worth. The rainstorm and the river are my brothers. The heron and And we are all connected to each other in a circle, in a hoop that never ends. Have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon? Or let the slave eagle where he's been? We need to sing with all the voices of the mountain. We need to all the colors of the wind. We need to paint with all the colors of the wind. How high does the sycamore grow? If you cut it down, then you'll never know. And you'll never hear the wolf cry to the blue Skins. We need to sing with all the voices of the mountain. We need to paint with all the colors of the wind. You can only advance to all you'll own is earth until you can. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Dave. David. Thank you, Red Star and Richard. We are so blessed, are we not? Let's give them some more love. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. Well, I had such a beautiful gift come in this morning. All you all have just made my heart so happy. I'm so happy to be here with all you all. Some, some of you I haven't seen for a long time, and I go, oh, they're back, they're here. I love them. You know, I miss people when they're gone, but I always know people, we have lives to live, right? But they're never gone out of our hearts. That's the whole beautiful thing. We're always connected because we're always painting with the colors of the wind. We're always painting our, our pictures of what life is to us and what our interpretation of the love we receive looks like. And every time someone smiles at me, I just feel loved. So get those grins on your faces, babies, because <laughs> I want to feel all that love today. <laughs> and and here's, the, here's the, oh my goodness, here's the blessing on top of the blessings today. We have a baby in our midst. We have a new mother and a baby in our midst. So we just pr say, praise God, because it's that, it's that newness. We can talk about the newness, and we can talk about the unlimited, 
infinite possibilities before us, but all it takes for me is to see a new child, to see a child, and it's all there. It's all there, and we are here, as Reverend Linda said, and as we say every Sunday, we're here to be the support of the children and of the mothers and the grandparents, and, and we're part of the tribe, are we not? We're part of the village that raises up to meet the needs of the rest of our tribe. So those of you I haven't seen for a while, oh, praise God, you're back. <laughs> If you missed me, well, praise God, because I missed you too. Yeah, and it's all about love. It's all about the song we sing. It's all about love. The song that you are. The notes you put into the universe. If there's anyone here that thought they didn't have music in their soul, Please know that was a misnomer. That was a DDL, dirty darn lie, that somehow you got a hold of. Yeah, because we are part of that harmony, that beautiful music, each and every one of us. And it's heard in the silence. It's felt in the smile. It's the energy that is life that we're part of. So praise God. That's what I say. Praise God. John O'Donohue, uh, Irish poet. Oh, I was supposed to leave for Ireland today, you all know. Yeah, I was supposed to leave for Ireland today, but there was a little... Yeah, yeah. So it's been delayed. But I had to bring forth um, this, this poetry of uh, John O'Donnell, Donahue, not because it, I was going to Ireland, but because I love it. I love it. But today he said, or today I want to read, each day is a journey. Each day is a journey. We come out of the night into day. All creativity awakens at this primal threshold where light and darkness test and bless each other. You can only discover balance in your life when you learn to trust the flow of the ancient wisdom. Now, I get to experience that often because I wake up before the, the sun has, has risen. And I get to be outside, and I see it coming in. And, and, it, and, if you, and I'm sure many of you do. And it's just a habit of mine. And I stand out there, and it's in anticipation of and an appreciation of. I appreciate the darkness. I appreciate the night, especially if I got to sleep a little bit. But I also anticipate the light that's coming, the newness, the freshness of the day. And so I have a, a new habit that I've started. Well, it's not really. It's, I've done it about a year now, and I love it. And it's because our music director brought to us about a year ago a special music song, and it was called Morning Prayer. It's by Karen Drucker. I invite, I invite you to look it up. It's not a long song, but it is a beautiful, profound message. And so I play it for myself every single morning. I might have already had one cup of coffee. I might have even looked at the Sudoku. And then I remember, I, I want to be, I want to be, <sighs> in all that I can be that is good and holy and sacred. And so I play that. I sit down. And that's another thing. I sit down to listen to it and allow the breath to move through me easily as I listen to this morning prayer by Karen Drucker. It's a beautiful piece of music. And, and, and again, Rochelle will, will sing it for us one of these days, I know, because it's just a fabulous way that I, can, that I start the day. Okay, now you know everything about me. What about you? <laughs> Tomorrow is Labor Day, right? Tomorrow's the... Um, and when I think of Labor Day, I think of the end of summer, and then school starts, and then the... the, um, the um, 
sports began, the fall sports began. You know how that goes, because I don't know what else other kind of ritual we have for Labor Day. I really don't. But I do know that it started It, it started in um, New York City. The first Labor Day was observed in New York City on September 5th, 1882, when 10,000 workers went off their jobs, unpaid, went off their jobs, and... Um, marched through the streets to demonstrate the strength of the labor and trade people. Labor unions and trade people. You know, I, I think about that. I think about all the people who do all of the things that serve us. Now, there isn't a one of us here that exists without the service of others. There's just, that's just not how it happens. But do we appreciate it and do we recognize it and do we recognize also the service that we bring to others? So it's just a moment for me to reflect on that when I think about what is Labor Day? And if you have that habit of thanking people, no matter who they are or what they're doing and also including those grumpy ones that we run into, if we thank them, for being present to us at that moment. You know, thank you so much for your service today. Thank you so much for bringing that to me. I walked in the grocery store day before yesterday and I was so thrilled that I encountered three different people that were employees of the store. Every single one of them asked me if they could help me or if I had found what I was looking for. That was kind of a new experience in that place. So I don't know what has taken place. But I loved it. I loved it. I love that I was noticed, and I love that in return, I got to appreciate them. You see, it's, that's what we do in this, this tribe. That's what we do in the village. We are not standalones. We are standing with each other, standing under the shelter of each other being that place of safety for each other and being there safe when we need to be under the shelter of someone else. Yeah, that's how it is, and that's what we do. But we don't always recognize how much people are giving us. So it's just one of those little things like, oh, now I can... Now I can be more appreciative because I know that there's more to appreciate out there. And the more I appreciate and the more that I see out there, the more I'll receive to appreciate. This is a win-win situation, folks. The more gratitude we feel, the more we'll have to be grateful for. The more we have to be grateful for, the more we have to share with others. Man, that's warm up here. I'm turning on the fan. Or maybe it's just me. But anyway, thinking about Labor Day, I wanted to share with you a little story about my neighbor's grandchild. My neighbor's grandchild just started in kindergarten this past month. Because now we're in September and he started in August. Anyway, he goes to school and the, the, uh, the teacher had them draw pictures of what they wanted to do or be when they grew up. Well, the neighbor's son and daughter-in-law got a call from the teacher and said, "We need to talk. I need to talk to you. Could you come in, please? So... They go in to see the teacher, and she said, she told them, I ask everyone, to, all the children, to draw a picture of what they wanted to be when they grew up and, or do. And she said, here's what your son drew. Showed them a picture, and here was a little truck with garbage cans, right? So they asked him, the little boy was there, what is it that you want to be when you grow up? He said, the garbage man. Why do you want to be a garbage man? Because the garbage man only works one day a week. He collected their garbage on Friday. Wouldn't that be lovely one day a week? <laughs> and that's what happens sometimes. Whatever is in front of us and whatever we've experienced, we believe to be the whole picture. Has that ever happened to you? Sure it has. Be and you'll find it every time you meet someone and you have a, a you know of a, of a, an acquaintance you both know, and you might have a totally different experience of that person as this other one does. 
That's what happens. We, whatever's in front of us, often that's our, we base our perception, our likes, our dislikes, our judgments on what's in front of us. And it's changing. It not only changes, it's not the same for everyone. It's our perspective of it. So sometimes we are like little children. I want to be the Friday worker. But this holiday, this I, I want to go back to to Labor Day. It can be as as we can. It can be seen as a recognition of the interconnectedness of us. We just again do not do this thing called life in an isolated state. Not really. We might feel like we're isolating. We might actually cut ourselves off from this or that, but not life itself. So it is not an isolated state. But we can make ourselves darn miserable, either thinking we're there or trying to, uh, trying to create an isolated state. But each person, each person's labor, whether it's physical, mental, or spiritual, contributes to this contributes to everything that we call life, our mental, our physical, our, our spiritual essence contributes to this. The September theme is pieces into peace. That's the theme that Centers for Spiritual Living will be using for the month of September. When I first heard that, pieces into piece, I was like, man, that's a tongue twister. What does it mean? And so I went home, and I turn on Netflix, no, YouTube, one of the other, and I watched The Bucket List. Have you all seen The Bucket List with Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman? I want to know what pieces into peace means so I sit down and I watch that movie not that it was recommended or anything like that it was just my excuse to watch a movie right but it was so profound because here you've got these two men one is an incredibly wealthy man and the other is a still actively working mechanic right automobile mechanic and they both end up in the same hospital room together two beds two guys so totally different. And so it, it brings forth from these two men who have nothing, absolutely, they think nothing in common. One incredibly wealthy. In fact, he says he practically owns the hospital. And the other guy says to him, Morgan Friedman says, well, do you really own the hospital? And he says, well, more or less. He said, well, then do something about the split pea soup. You know, he was a very practical man. But in, in the ensuing time there together, they both receive these dire messages about their life is very limited. The life they have left is very limited. Both of them receive that message. Now they have something in common. Now they have something in common. And then they start talking and, and they, they discover that one, one has started to write a bucket list. He knows he's got a, not a lot of time left. So, so Morgan Freeman starts to write a bucket list and, and then Jack Nicholson gets a hold of it. And you all know Jack Nicholson is a very large personality. Morgan Freeman was a very hmm, laid back personality. But in coming together and reading their the, what, what they discovered was there were things they, that Morgan Freeman wanted to do. He wanted, he wanted to drive a Shelby. Yeah, a Ford Shelby. He wanted to drive one. And, and he wanted to go to the uh, Himalayas. And he wanted to laugh until he cried. Those were things on his bucket list. He wanted to see the most beautiful, inspiring place in the world. And Jack Nicholson's like, not a whole lot of... Um, there, let's bring it up a little bit. Now, here's the thing. Here's the blessing of that. We need, see, we need people to support us. We need people to see. If we can't see the greater, the greater possibility for ourselves, others can. And you never know where you're going to meet that other. 
And you never know how it's going to come to you. Is it going to come as a challenge? Is it going to come as a beautiful support to you? Or is it just going to float by you? We have to be awakened to the idea that we can live the life we want to live and have the experiences that bring us joy, 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 as we discover there is more to life than what we're experiencing in this moment. Had someone, when I was talking about this movie, tell me, well, I wanted to go to the moon. And, and so it was a really beautiful um, statement he made. And I said, did you really plan on going to the moon? Yep, I was going to be one of the first on the moon. Well, what have you done about that? He's about 70. I said, what have you done about it since then? And he told me that wasn't really anything he discovered that was on his bucket list. It was something he picked up as a young kid, and he thought it was something he could never do. Now, how many of us carry things within us that are, I'll never be able to, but I'd sure like to. And they aren't even a passion within us. And here's what he told me was really his passion. I I have permission to share this. I so love it. He would like to pl plow and plant a field. Turn the earth over. Plow and plant a field. He's a businessman who has never been on a farm. Never been on a ranch. But he's, con he's contacted someone. So next spring, planting he has a place to go for a week or, or 10 days, whatever he chooses. I love this. I love this. I love the idea. We can, we can really allow ourselves to know what our passion would be. What's on your bucket list? And is it really something you want? Or is it something that you thought was impossible that sounded good? You're the only one who's going to decide that. I'm the only one who's going to decide for myself. Oh, I want to have food delivered to my house every single day. Now, I do a once a week now. Panda Express, this one, that one. I'm getting ready. You see, I'm moving into my bucket list. Oh. So what I love about that movie is they became friends because they had something that they could go towards in common. Each was supporting the other. And at the end of the movie, this is what I got out of it. It wasn't anything they did, the places they saw. It was the change that took place within them. And I think even Morgan Freeman's wife said, he left a stranger and came back my husband. He had given himself, he had given himself with the help of his new friend permission to have his dreams fulfilled. Some of the things he wanted to do fulfilled. It doesn't take away from others if it's really our good. We'll bring back more good. They might be uncomfortable with it. You know, his wife was very unhappy about him leaving. And, he, and she even said to him, what are you doing to the children? And he said, I'm not doing anything to the children. You see, sometimes we get confused about what's ours to do and who we owe it to. We owe it to the bless, we owe it to ourselves to bless ourselves with our truth and with our integrity. So how do we turn the pieces into peace? We do that by allowing ourselves to find that peace within us. If we want peace, if we want to experience peace, if we want to see peace in this world, we have to find peace in our hearts. We have to find peace within our minds. And sometimes it's just the hardest thing. I want to tell you what really challenges me around peace. 
this week. And it's been going on for years. It's skunks. I have skunks that are in my neighborhood. And I have the most incredible skunk or skunks, I'm not sure which, um, in my neighborhood. In fact, I think they're bionic. Because they can spray every hour on the hour, all day long and half of the nighttime. I have a fenced-in backyard that my little dog can't go into because of those nasty-smelling skunks. <sighs> you see, I could get really worked up about it. Every time I open the door, I go, oh, God. And then we get reprieves. So then I get hope again, right? So I have 20 minutes of clean air, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, they're gone. Shut the door. Baby says she has to go out. The dog. I open the door again. <gasps> It interferes with my peace. Let me just tell you, it interferes with my peace. So what happens? Well, I was told when I did this that I should have tuck and roll. You know, you drop tuck and roll. Well, that isn't what we do with the skunk. But here's what we can do. We can, I can stop. Stop immediately. Stop this idea that I'm so frustrated over these. And I don't want to kill them, by the way. I just want them to go to another neighborhood. Not mine. Not mine. And they've been there for years. But anyway, well, I can stop. I can stop myself. Holy cow. I can shut the door and I no longer have that experience. Stop. That's what it takes. Stop and drop. Stop and drop, right? Stop and then drop from here, from the thinking part, into the heart part. And the heart is full of gratitude joy, love, peace. That's what's in our hearts. We might think that that's where grief and, and anger and pain lives. It lives right up here. The heart's full of. So we st I stop and I drop into this and then I know the next step, there's only stop, drop, and breathe. I got to breathe into this. Breathe into the choice I made. Breathe into this. I have a wonderful home. I have a wonderful dog. I love that there's wild animals come through there. I, and there, there, there are a few. I just wish it wasn't the skunks. But then I might say, well, then I don't want the raccoons either. Or this or that. You know, so I go on the internet and I look up, what value does a skunk have? Well, to this day, I don't know of anything that's been created that doesn't have value. I might not know it, but, it, uh, but I can find it. I can find that idea that all of creation has value, just like every one of us. We don't have to have something in common. You don't have to please each other. We don't have to be pleased by the other. What we have in common is life from the one life, from spirit. We're all a part of it. And we all bring a gift. We're all part of this tapestry that makes up life, that provides a place for everyone. Now the skunk doesn't belong at my place, but there might be a swamp it does belong in. There might be a field it can go to. And if any of you would like to have one, just call me. You know, there was a, a unity minister in Seattle, Washington. His name was Richard Levy. He was an incredible, incredibly beautiful man who was so mindful of life. And he used to end his services like this. Live well. Live well, beloveds, live well. Love deeply. Don't withhold your love. Don't ration it out. Love deeply. And learn to let go. Learn to let go. Live well, love deeply. Learn to let go. We are blessed. We are so blessed in this day, in this moment. And as we are mindful, as we are present to this moment, we can take the pieces and 
and recognize them. Any peace that needs the blessing of peace. Any peace within us that comes to mind that needs a blessing of forgiveness. Any peace that comes into our, our thoughts that needs to be allowed to dissipate will free us to move into that greater experience and expression of peace unto the world. So if we have a bucket list list this week, let's check it over. Let's check the items on it. Is this, is this the thing that will bring me more happiness, more joy? Well, then why am I waiting? What's holding me up? Oh, wait. Why don't I just move into the happiness and joy right now? It's a thought. It's a choice. And it's a possibility for each one of us. So blessing our time together in deep gratitude and love. Together, let us say, and so it is, and so it is. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend Yvonne. And now I want to take a moment to celebrate those of us, those of us, members of our community who are online. We're grateful for your ongoing support. We hope to see you again next week when we have our guest minister. And in the meantime, we want you to go out and shine the light. And now, as our ushers come forward, and we're blessed with the opportunity to share, please join me in saying our abundance prayer. <laughs>